welcome back to Old Soul Torah. This week we're going to be, we have a very interesting lesson using text analysis for the first half, followed by an, a, an application, followed by a spiritual tool using the four letter divine name of Hashem, Yud He Vav He, to recharge your spirit, especially, especially crucial during the turbulent and challenging times that we're living in. One of the things I wanted to say first and foremost when we look at the text, when we look at Torah, if you're new to Jewish learning, then the approach we take to the text, it's not to find historical fact. We're not trying to find scientific and historical facts about our past. That's not the goal of Jewish learning. Jewish learning approaches the Torah as a text that is a living document. It's living, it's a prophetic document. That means that all the verses that we study and the phrases that we look at and through the Hebrew language especially, it's revelation, it's insight, it's wisdom. It's every year you could be studying the same story, but every year that you look at that same story, you're looking at it from a different angle. You're seeing it from a different perspective. You're reading commentaries. You're accompanying the written text with the oral. And that is for the pursuit of wisdom and being closer to our creator and our maker Hashem, that we should walk in perfect divine companionship all the days of our life. So with no further ado, let us look into the text and let us do some text analysis. We're only going to be looking really at one verse and, and especially and most significantly one phrase within that one verse. And then it's going to lead us right into the spiritual exercise using the divine name as a meditation and breathing tool. Okay, folks, with no further ado, let's get started. So here is our verse from the book of Exodus. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses. Why? Because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So aside from the obvious harsh slavery, which is a unfortunate physical circumstance, they suffered from broken spirit, which in Hebrew is kotzer ruach. I assure you that if you look up this specific phrase in your English translations, you will get numerous translations on what this phrase might mean. Even in the Hebrew commentaries throughout the ages, there are many, many different translations on what this phrase, kotze ruach, might mean and imply. So here is what it literally means. Kotzer itself means short. So Kotzer Ruach is shortened or lessened spirit, breath, or wind. In our case, we're going to just look at spirit and breath. So it's a shortness of spirit, shortness of breath, or a lessening of the spirit or the breath. For our own interest on today's topic, we're only going to be looking at one interpretation. Remember, in Torah study, there are numerous layers of meaning, and like an onion, you can go on peeling one layer after another. So here is what I find to be the most interesting interpretation this year. And that interpretation is number five, the inability to lengthen the breath. And this comes from one of the mainstream commentators, Rashi. Rashi writes, but they hearkened not to Moses. They did not accept his words of comfort, his promise, because of the anguish of spirit, or the, literally the shortness of spirit or breath. If one is in anguish, his breath comes in short gasps, and he cannot draw long breaths. What Rashi is explaining is why Israel could not hear or receive the message of promise and hope. And he notices a special terminology of broken spirit to literally mean shortness of breath related to despair and anguish, as he explained. He also specifically says they weren't able to take long, deep breaths. And this is directly related to their inability to hear God's messages. Very powerful, right? 
But what makes it more amazing is right before this verse, when God gives a message of promise, it ends with, I am Hovaya, I am yud Hey vav Hey." In other words, we have this phrase, I am Hovaya or Hashem, sandwiched between the message of hope and the inability to hear. So why even say, I am Hashem, if God is talking to Moses, you don't think Moses already knows who's addressing him? Of course he does, unless the Torah could be hinting at something. Remember, there is the Jewish principle that God prepares the cure before giving the malady, and that the mentioning of his name in the middle may be hinting at that. So first things first is Hebrew is read from right to left. So when we talk about the divine name, we're talking about Yud, He, Vav, He, from right to left. Now, don't get confused when Y and J are interchangeable and W and V, you'll see different alternative versions of this, both are correct. The next thing we need to understand is the role and function of the Hebrew letters or language itself. In traditional Judaism, the Hebrew letters are understood as portals to the upper worlds. Even the word for the Hebrew language implies this. Ivrit, the word for Hebrew, literally means crossing over or passing through. Why? Because they bridge the physical and spiritual realms. But Hebrew is so much more. The Hebrew alphabet transcends the very concept of language. It includes language and more. The Hebrew letters are instruments of power. In fact, the Hebrew word for letter actually means pulse or vibration, indicating a flow of energy. Hebrew letters transmit spiritual signals. In the language of the Internet, they're like fiber optic lines carrying the full spectrum of cosmic energy. By virtue of their shapes, sounds, sequences, and vibrations, the Hebrew letters radiate a wide range of forces. Regarding using the divine name for meditation, the central purpose behind it is to restore our lives to their natural balanced state. The practice reconnects us to our true divine image of ultimate perfection and provides us with harmony, guidance, and blessing. Their kedusha or holiness, purifies our hearts and cleanses destructive impulses from the inner environment of our beings. Therefore, if Moses were to deliver a message or a promise or some hope from God, this time we would be able to hear it. A good place to begin is by closing your eyes and visualizing the Hebrew divine name in your mind's eye. Imagine the letters of the divine name glowing with radiant light. And as you hold this visual image, let it permeate your consciousness, invoking a deep sense of connection and reverence. From there, you're going to be taking every one of the letters as the four steps to a breathing exercise. Yud is what is beyond you, the light above you. He is an ingoing breath. Vav is the hold. And He is the outgoing breath. I will elaborate on this more, but first I decided to put directions here for anyone who wants to pause the video and do a screenshot. You have the whole exercise outlined over here. So this meditation really has two sides to it. It has the visual side to it, and it has the inhale and the hold, exhale. Okay, so the yud is the white light that is above us. The Hey 
then is the inhaling, vav is the holding, and then the hay is the exhale. So the interesting thing about it is yud is really does mean it's the highest letter in the entire Hebrew alphabet. Yud does mean pure potentiality. It's the highest realm of existence. So you're drawing down the light with the hay. Now hay, the sound of hay ordinarily is H. It is a sound literally of the breath. And that's why you have two hays in the divine name, one for the inhale and one for the exhale, the outgoing breath. Because literally when you, when you breathe, you're making the sound of hay or H. Now it's best to inhale and exhale through the nose because remember in Genesis, God blew a soul into Adam through his nostrils. So we use the nostrils. We use the nose for the inhale and the exhale. Also we're created in the image of God. So the yud is the smallest letter in the shape of the head. The two he's, he is the letter five in Hebrew. So you have five and five. So you're going to be sitting with your palms, resting them upward, because this is, one of, this is actually one of the hand positions we use when we pray in the ancient days. We open our hands and Hashem fulfills us and sustains us. And we receive from Him. So we're going to put that on our side. Again, the Yud of God's name is the head. The Vav is the torso. And the two hands are the hay and the hay. So you usually have, you, you literally have yud, hay, vav, hay. And so you're in the image of the divine name and you're doing the breathing exercises and you're visualing the letters all at the same time. Now the inhale and the exhale should be slow and gradual. I'm not going to give you a specific count because everybody's lung capacity is different. My, I have very strong lungs, so I use the number eight. Eight inhale, eight hold, eight exhale. That's me. Other people use four or five, but you can count. So if your thoughts are racing, one of the ways to calm your thoughts down is the slow, deep inhale, the hold. And when you're holding, feel the expansion of the, feel the expansion in your body of the life force. And when you exhale, slow and deep, your thoughts will slow down with your breathing. Thought follows breath. All right, so anytime you're in a panic, anytime you're in a bad space, just slow down, meditate upon the letters of God's name, slow the breathing down, hold, allow that inhale to expand and exhale and release. And that's pretty much where it is. Psalm 16.8 says, I place the holy name of God before me always. So with this, I placed this divine name in my wallet 30 years ago, and I have not taken it out. And whenever you need to meditate on the name of God, you can open your wallet, you can look at the letters, you can gaze at them, and they provide you with guidance, protection, and blessing. So I'll see you next week. In the meantime, stay healthy, stay well, stay blessed. And may Hashem resolve all the, the, the terrible situation happening in the Middle East. May all the captives be freed. May we see an end to this warfare. May we visualize shalom and peace in our prayers and meditation. Put a white light, a golden light around the Middle East, around that entire vi vision. And may Hashem intervene miraculously so that there's a, there's a full display of his wonders, that there should be an outcome that benefits everybody, that provides peace and security and healing, because right now we need it most. Okay, take care until next week. Shalom.